the Samsung Galaxy S5 can be defined by one word, evolution. The camera has evolved to give clearer, faster snaps, the fitness tracking has been enhanced by packing in a heart rate monitor and a smarter S Health app, and a fingerprint scanner makes this the most secure Galaxy phone ever made. But does it do enough to stand out in a market saturated with decent high-end handsets? The short answer is no, but that's only a small part of the story. The design of the S5 will be the area that receives the most criticism, and for good reason. Year after year, Samsung has failed to bring out something that wows in the hand. The rest of the competition has seen this as a key battleground, but Samsung remains unmoving in its favour of plastic over metal. The S5 is definitely more solid than the S4, and water and dust resistance, removable battery and micro SD slot should all be applauded, but it just doesn't look like the cutting edge device it should do by now. There's got to be something better here. HTC and Sony are able to put out superior designs at the same cost, and Samsung needs to step up. Oppositely, the screen on the S5 is the phone's best feature. It's more vivid at full power than the HTC One M8, can go darker than the rest, and it's still pin sharp throughout. The Full HD Super AMOLED is 22% brighter than the Galaxy S4 without chewing through any more power, and Samsung has crammed the Galaxy S5 with all manner of settings to let you find the perfect balance for you. On top of that, features like Adapt Display make sure the screen is clear even in bright light. Bottom line, the Galaxy S5 offers the finest looking display on the smartphone market. The interface of the Galaxy S5 has seen a big improvement, thanks to new icons and a layout that gives everything a more fluid, premium look. TouchWiz is snappier than ever, and Samsung's taken note of the trend towards news aggregation by continuing its integration with Flipboard in the form of My Magazine. Strangely, we notice some slowdown in places, which is odd when the Galaxy S5 contains a market-leading CPU. Most noticeably, the camera app takes a while to load up, which suggests Samsung hasn't quite managed to optimise its software in certain areas. Still, these are minor gripes in what is otherwise a very pleasing under-the-finger experience. Battery life on the Galaxy S5 is excellent, and the reasons for this are twofold. Firstly, you've got the larger power pack, which has been bumped to 2800 mAh, but more importantly, there's a Snapdragon 801 processor under the hood, making everything far more efficient. To give this context, in our battery test we ran a video for 90 minutes on full brightness, and the Galaxy S5 only suffered a 16% drop in juice. This outclasses the HTC One M8, which took a 23% hit in the same test, but it's also a great device for battery life. This makes it among the best we've seen from a phone, and should give you all the confidence you need that this is a handset that just keeps going. The Galaxy S5's camera is one of the more powerful on the market, packing a 16 megapixel isocell unit and a host of features people will enjoy. The biggest one Samsung's pushing here is the autofocus, which works in just 0.3 seconds. There's no doubt it can indeed take pictures this quickly, but we've got a few gripes before we come to that. First of all, the camera itself takes around 3 seconds to boot up before it's even ready to start firing. Then there were a couple of times when the autofocus went green when everything was still blurry on screen. Still, the HDR mode works wonderfully and selective focus is also a new feature that's fun to play around with. The S5 is also one of only a few devices out there offering 4K video mode, although we think we're still a year or two off from needing this capability. The camera on the Galaxy S5 is one that rewards effort. In the right conditions, it offers up some truly amazing snaps, but you'll need to spend some time with it to unlock its stunning potential. Samsung's attempt at biometrics is second best to Cupertino's, but it's not quite as accurate. Samsung wants you to swipe your finger down the screen vertically, which just isn't a natural gesture. You can swipe your thumb sideways instead, but accuracy is lower still, and you'll often find yourself hitting the maximum five attempts quickly. The sensor located on the rear of the S5 gives you access to your heart rate whenever you fancy it. But that's the thing. Unless you have a medical condition or are meticulously tracking your day-to-day -day health, you're unlikely to fancy it at all. The result is that it feels like it's been put there for the sake of having something fancy and new, and even though it mostly works as intended, it's nowhere near as robust as something that's wrist or chest based. Critically, there's very little to shout about with the Galaxy S5, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing. You can talk about extra innovation all you like, but if a phone has good battery, strong camera and a great screen then you're on to a winner. But no matter how you look at it, the S5 feels cheap. Looks may not be everything, but it's a critical part of the buying cycle. Basically, you can't rely on brand loyalty for long if competitors are putting something out much better looking. Samsung has done enough with the Galaxy S5 to make it one of the top smartphones of 2014, but purely because it's a solid, powerful handset that ticks all the boxes and very little more. If you're a Samsung fan, this is the phone you should buy. 
If you're more agnostic, there are better out there.